I am Christine Kaya, Nashimuero, Chiboga District Human Member of Parliament. I'm also the Shadow Minister for Water and Environment. I belong to the Climate Change Standing Committee of Parliament and also the Environment and Natural Resources Committee of Parliament. And I'm a climate change activist, but also a gender activist. And I've been participating, I think so far, nine COPs, in nine COPs. 20, COP 27, I think was my ninth COP. And I've been following up with a number of uh, issues, but following the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, what we call UNFCC in brief, they have their thematic groupings. So you need to belong to some grouping in order, you know, to follow up with uh, these negotiations. But uh, most important is now the issue of uh, looking at the majority affected group which we have identified as the small-scale farmers. All sectors have been affected by climate change, but when you look at the effect on agriculture, which employs the most vulnerable, which employs the biggest populations, especially in Africa, which employs mostly women, because based on assessments, many men have run away from the gardens, many men have been disappointed by the performance of agriculture, so they have left women in the gardens. So if we are to if we are to work on the most affected, most vulnerable, then small scale farmers uh, must be helped. So the loss due to climate change is too much on that group. That is why we are looking out for building their resilience. When there is any climate change effect, these people's losses the damage caused to their livelihood is too much compared to others. That's why we are over concentrating on the, on the asks. When we go to the COP, we would like all the groups, whether you're on technology, whether you're on mitigation, adaptation, gender, try to look at building resilience of these small-scale people. Because once we are not uh, uh, resilient, then we are bound to lose a lot of money and also a lot of people. Uh, because they, they are sustenance is on, uh, on uh, natural related activities, especially agriculture. So, I mean, I'm very impressed that AFSA is organizing a post COP meeting. Very many of the civil society, when you finished, when you came <laughs> from the COP 27 that took place in El Sham, Egypt. We had not gotten, we had not gathered to really evaluate ourselves, how far our asks were incorporated in the negotiation texts and the decisions. But the AFSA is so far the first society in Uganda to convene us. And we are looking at how far our issues were. Yes, AFSA is leading us, but now like me, a member of parliament, I'm, remember I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, agroecology, which AFSA is leading us into. So we, we, were, we are trying to see how far we are our asks incorporated in the COP27 decisions. Most importantly, uh, building uh, uh, farmers' resilience uh, to ensure that food sovereignty in Africa is really achieved. That is what we are trying to evaluate ourselves on. Uh, in the different thematic negotiations of UNFCC, that is what we are, looking, we are looking at now. And at the same time, trying to strategize and, and, and equip the negotiators with our concept. Is it really uh, sustainable? Is it really an update of the ongoing negotiations? That is what we are doing here. And me, I'm very, very impressed. And uh, the information we are getting from here is also helping us prepare ourselves for, for COP28. We are saying that this time around, we pray that the commercialization within the COPs is reduced and we look at local, local. You see, we have local, but there's some local, local, meaning you go an extra mile to find the local, local actions. Because those are the ones that sustain us as far as food is concerned. Those are the actions that um, help uh, maintain our resilient practices. Those are the sustainable practices that we need to uphold and they should not vanish because of climate change. We have to do something about it. 
So that is what we are trying to evaluate ourselves here. Thank you.